ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to signature global india limited q4 fy24 earnings conference call on hosted by icici security as a reminder all participants lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please know that this conference is being recorded and i've handed the conference over to mr adidev chatopadhyay thank you and over to you sir good evening everyone on behalf of icic securities i like to welcome you all to the signature global india limited q4 fy24 results call so the management we have with us today mr pradeep kumar agarwal the chairman and whole time director mr lalit kumar agarwal the vice chairman and whole time director mr ravi agarwal managing director mr devender agarwal the joint md and whole time director mr rajat kathuria the chief executive officer mr manish garg the chief financial officer and mr pritika singh head of investor relations i now like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks over to you and thank you thank you dev good evening everyone welcome to the earning conference call for signature global i am delighted to engage in a discussion with you following our fourth quarter and full financial year earning during which we also share our and complement for the year and provide guidance for the upcoming year i trust that you have reviewed the company's financial performance for the fourth quarter and full year along with the investor presentation and a complete press release all the all of which are available on our website and stock exchanges before we tell into our operational and financial performance i would like to touch upon the notable transformation in india's real estate sector and at the country level in general this will provide a solid foundation for our discussion on the performance we will be presenting for the full year in the final quarter of 2023 october december india gdp gdp surged by robust 8.4% surpassing the rbi projection of 6.5% this stronger than expected gdp growth in quarter 4 2023 let several agencies revise their forecast upward for india's financial year 2023 4 and 24 5 growth making india stand out among major economies presently most agencies estimated india's growth to be in the range of 6 and 1/2 to 7% for next financial year behind the nation rapid growth like factor such as increasing disposable income asset organization enhanced affordability and improved aspirational goal which are also driving the real estate sector of the country the financial year showcased two notable trends firstly a growing inclination towards the premium real estate segment reflected changing customer preferences home buyer often luxury amenities and superior construction quality in the prestige location secondly stronger developers demonstrate strength during economic challenges leading to a consolidation in real estate development establish clear gain market share due to their ability to maintain quality 
and delivery standards, indicating itself to our trusted brand in the real estate industry. Despite the Reserve Bank of India implementation of a strict monetary policy since the residential sector in the country witnessed the extraordinary surge in both sales and new property launches throughout 2023. This outstanding performance resulted in a significant milestone with over 3 lakh houses units sold, setting a record that had not been achieved in a decade, according to CBRE. The real estate consultancy also highlighted those major banks extended approximately 2.7 lakh crore in credit to the residential sector until January 2024, representing an annual increase of around 37%. Moving on the financial and operational performance of your company, Signature Global achieved its best ever quarterly and annual pre-sale performance of INR 41.4 billion and INR 72.7 billion respectively, with year-on-year -year growth rate of 240% for the fourth quarter and 112% for the full year, thereby significantly exceeding guidance of 45 billion INR in FY24. Collections grew 62% to INR 31.1 billion, again comfortably surpassing our annual guidance of INR rupees 29 billion. Following strong operational performance, the net profit of the company for FI24 stood at INR 0.016 billion against the loss of INR 0.64 billion last year. The latest quarterly figures under those are companies Steadfast dedication to quality and customer centric growth approach. As you are aware, we have strategically moved towards increase the speed of our growth track and capitalize on prevailing opportunities. While our focus was primarily on affordable segments in the past few years. We have now diversified our portfolio towards permit income and premium segment as well. Looking ahead to our strategic vision requires a complete transition, directing our effort towards the promising demand in the mid income and premium segment where ample opportunities are emerging. Our focus on maintaining positive cash flow has been helpful in providing the, us with a flexibility needed to navigate through these challenges. This approach not only positions us to mitigate risk, but also create opportunities for sustainable profitability and long-term value creation for our stakeholders. In India, success in the residential real estate category has been attributed to localized players for its variety of the reason. The ability to acquire land more efficiently, execute projects more efficiently, and most importantly, understand pricing dynamic due to the deeper understanding of the market. The largest player from the north did not achieve significant success with expanding to Mumbai or other cities, while the most successful 
Mumbai player has only recently started expanding beyond Mumbai or after the significant success. Bangalore based players have found significant success in localized market with a focus primarily on the South India. Of course, their expectation, there are expectations to this rule a few pan India players. We are relatively a young company with less than a decade of experience in the real estate industry and we are still in the initial stage of our corporate journey. We have also been fortunate to be a geography where com competition is very limited in terms of land acquisition, especially where the demand surpass supply for a variety of reasons, including proximity to a supply served daily, extensive infrastructure development, job creation, and the presence of multinational, there is an enormous amount of genuine demand in Gurugram for good quality housing at the right price. And this is a segment where we are creating to. Therefore, being a ge geography, we deal, do not foresee is it is a risk at all for the next three to five years, mainly because we are at the right price point at the current stage, say after three years, we might consider nearby geographies like Noida or other cities. A promising market rather than venturing into completely unfamiliar territory. For now, what we perceive as, as a risk to us being a single geography player, indeed, it is the advantage for us in our view, expanding a new geography might create a risk at a current stage. Last financial year, we also witnessed an increase in construction spending with the demand surging and the land acquisition and construction costs arising. We believe this is likely to remain elevated this year as well. In terms of revenue recognition, we believe the figure was slightly lower for this year. However, we expect to it improve in this FY25. Our estimate is that revenue recognition for FY25 is likely to be around 3,800 crore. And we believe that growth is likely to be reflected on a quarter on quarter basis going forward. I will now hand over to our CEO, Mr. Rajat Kothuria, to share the financial performance in detail. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, hi, afternoon, everyone. Uh, while we've put up the numbers, and you know, uh, you know, I'd just like to share a few views uh, and some bit of guidance for the coming year. Uh, so see, we are uh, witnessing a sustained sort of trend in terms of strong housing demand. So, you know, we've always been saying that, you know, the market's hugely supply constraints. So it's not that last one or two years that, you know, the trend has really picked up. But if you really look at our last four years of performance, you know, in fiscal year 21, we did uh, sales of about 1,600-odd crores, you know. And as we are supplying more inventory, you know, that inventory is kind of getting picked up. So honestly, what is the true market demand is very tough to estimate, but it's very safe to say that, yes, it's much more than the current level of supply being done by the entire, you know, uh, housing players in this particular market. So from, you know, uh, getting back to about 1,600 odd crores in FY21, last year we did about, uh, you know, 7,300 odd crores. This was uh, much higher than the previous year and even, you know, the guidance we uh, rolled out at the middle of the year. So there's almost like a 60% plus, you know, sales CAGR, which we've witnessed. And as of today, we are in the best possible position in terms of uh, 
you know, ready to launch inventory. In the history of the company, we've never been in such a, a good position ever. As of today, we are very confident that, you know, we'll be doing launches of almost northwards of 16,000 crores within the first three quarters itself of this financial year. And, uh, you know, like <clears throat> we forayed into uh, premium housing, you know, these high-rise apartments uh, by a project called Delix DXP, you know, which, which I think uh, got some media attention. So you guys might be aware, wherein, you know, we did sales of almost close to 3,600 odd crores, uh, roughly 2.7 million square foot equivalent project got sold as it was launched. And it was actually multiple times oversubscribed. So, you know, that was the significant launch for the previous year, which happened in the fourth quarter. And that was one of the key factors which helped us achieve this annual, you know, sales potential of almost 7,300 odd crores. Uh, but, you know, for the current year, uh, you know, we are coming up with launches at multiple locations, whether it be, uh, you know, the Sona Elevated Corridor, where we've uh, tasted a lot of success, you know, over uh, the past few years. We're coming up with a large project over there. Uh, we're coming, uh, prior to that, we're coming up with, uh, you know, another apartment complex uh, on the Southern Peripheral Road in Sector 71. So these two are fairly large launches, you know, which should happen, uh, let's say, within the next six months, uh, effectively within the initial quarters of this financial year. And, you know, then there are a couple of other locations within Gurgaon. So effectively, uh, you know, we are fairly confident that these launches of 16 or 1,000 crores should happen, uh, you know, which will help us with the thesis that, you know, since the uh, supply is constrained and as we are able to come up with more sustained supply of products at the right price points, you know, uh, the demand is always there. If I talk about the current situation, we are, you know, running at the lowest possible, you know, unsold inventory in the com company because, you know, as we're launching projects, it's getting sold. Talking of a few more facts for the previous year, you know, our average realizations improved. Uh, you know, it is almost uh, about 11,800. Uh, so, which in absolute terms, you know, it doesn't seem very high, you know, still products are priced less than 12,000 rupees a foot and, you know, coming from, you know, Signature Global, which is like a very well-recognized brand in the local market, you know, it doesn't seem too expensive at all, but, you know, it's like a fair bit of rise because in the previous year, the same number stood at about 7,800 odd close. So, you know, we've seen uh, better realizations, higher sales, much better collections, you know, our uh, payment plans are usually, uh, you know, very end user driven, very construction or time linked sort of plans are there, you know, so our collections were close to about 3,100 odd crores, again a steep price vis be the previous year. So, you know, all those uh, key performance indicators are moving northwards, uh, you know, as anticipated and, you know, we are fairly convinced that, uh, you know, in the coming year, uh, some of these guiding numbers which we are providing, you know, should fall in place. Uh, so, you know, whether it be the launches which we are targeting for about 16 or 1,000 crores, uh, you know, which is which is a bit of a science, you know, because we know the exact area to be launched and the pricing, uh, you know, guesstimate is there. So 16 or 1,000 crores is, is a bit of a science. Uh, but, you know, we are, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, taking up a sales uh, target of uh, upwards of 10,000 crores. So uh, please keep in perspective that, you know, we are we're just a 10-year-old enterprise. We started operations back in 2024, 20, 2014, sorry. Uh, and, you know, for FY fiscal year 24-25, you know, uh, we are taking our sales uh, target of 10,000 crores. This is almost 37% higher than the sales <coughs> which we've done in the current year. So, and, you know, all of this as a thumb rule by and large is happening just because of few factors, you know. Uh, our approach has always been towards the business that, you know, this is a home manufacturing company, you know, uh, keep churning uh, the projects at a good pace, keep the cash flows very healthy, uh, you know, treat it like any other, uh, you know, B2C business, uh, focus on good quality brand, uh, you know, focus on strong distribution, uh, you know, focus on strong financial discipline. So, you know, just the same set of factors coupled with the fact that uh, to what even the VG was saying that, you know, we feel 
that there's so much to be done in this geography and we never, uh, you know, moved out of that strategy. So, you know, some of these basic things, you know, which have really helped us over the last decade, you know, uh, we intend to continue, uh, you know, doing the same things, you know. It's not that we have something very differentiated plan, uh, you know, for the coming, uh, you know, small to medium term. But, uh, you know, so that's why, you know, this bit of confidence that with the launches of 15 or 1,000 crores, you know, our sales, we should be able to achieve 10,000 plus crores. Uh, collections should stay robust. Uh, our guesstimate is that this number should be close to about 6,000 odd crores. Uh, a lot of it will come for projects which are already under development. Uh, so about 65 odd percent of these collections are anticipated from projects which are already under development, while the balance 30 to 35 percent. We are hoping that, you know, from the sales, since it's happening, or the launches, since it's happening in the earlier part of the year, uh, you know, about balance 35% 30, of uh, the proposed collections are planned out of the new projects. Uh, one very critical factor, you know, which, uh, which I would like to, uh, you know, bring to all of you is that the last year, was significant for us in many ways. Uh, you know, we managed to uh, take the company, uh, you know, public. We've received a very good response, you know, uh, after the public offering as well. And in addition, you know, uh, while we were going public and in the offer document, we had mentioned that we are acquiring something very significant, uh, you know, land parcel on the southern peripheral road. But at that stage, it was mainly an agreement to sell. There was, there was no, you know, conveyance of land which had happened at that stage. But as of today, uh, you know, there's almost 17 million square foot of, uh, you know, developable space which has been added through the course of the last year and primarily in the second half of the previous year, uh, which is in sector 71. Uh, almost 92 plus acres of land, uh, which is primarily owned by the company, and there's uh, you know a smaller portion which is uh, you know coming to us in the form of the JDA. So you know this entire uh, acquisition on which we were working for a reasonable bit of time is now complete. You know we've moved on in terms of project planning now, and you know this acquisition will help us uh, in. You know, coming years to really uh, change the scale of operations. You know, it, it's a very significant location. Uh, we are not a, you know, multiple decade old entity, but, you know, maybe at the right time or an opportune time, you know, we managed to, uh, you know, create such good sort of, you know, land position. So if you look at our total portfolio as of today, uh, you know, some rounded up numbers, but effectively 40 or 48 or million square foot of development of which 16 million is ongoing. Uh, that is expected to get completed between this financial year and the coming financial year. There's another 32 million square foot, which includes the project which we just launched, you know, DLX DXP, but by and large, almost 29 million plus square foot of portfolio something, you know, which we'll be launching in the you know, next two to three years. So as of today, you know, we're sitting on very uh, good portfolio. Uh, a lot of these, uh, <coughs> you know, developments are happening in places besides 71, uh, where we've been doing launches in the past. So about, you know, very broadly, 17 million is in sector 71. About 7 million is in Sona. About 3 million is in, uh, you know, uh, the Northern Peripheral or the Dwarf Expressway, part of which got launched. And the balance 5 million is at a couple of other very good strategic locations within Gurgaon. So good growth on sales in the previous year. We are very hopeful of similar sales performance or growth in the coming year. Uh, likewise growth in collections as well. Portfolio is fairly strong, very robust. Uh, also in terms of, you know, the balance sheet, we, we feel very comfortable. Uh, we have a net debt position which is just about, uh, you know, 1150 odd crores, which, uh, you know, we usually compare it in terms of, uh, you know, the, the operating cash flow which we are creating. So, you know, in the previous year, if we've, uh, 
created operating cash of about 3100 odd crores the surplus was uh, you know in excess of 900 crores or about 30% was the surplus uh, which was available to us uh, you know either for land acquisition or for let's say distribution to shareholders but technically given the level of growth uh, and these acquisitions which were happening you know we deployed bulk of it in acquiring the 17 million square foot of you know land parcel in sector 71 and also acquired land from our JDA partners uh, which is about 1.5 million square foot in the coming year the operating surplus is also going to uh, you know, go up significantly. Uh, in the previous year, if our surplus was about 30%, in the coming year of the 6 or 1,000 crores of collection, about 45%, uh, you know, we anticipate to be the operating surplus available to the company. Uh, and just a link point, you know, so given the surplus is going to be so strong, you know, we've also stated that the net debt will never cross 0.5 times the operating surplus uh, in absolute terms also uh, the net debt number should go down so you know at the current scale the net debt is, is uh, you know not very high but you know that number is also uh, going down uh, you know in the coming year so you know balance sheet uh, seems to be in a comfortable zone uh, our there's a lot of focus besides sales on completions during the year. Uh, you know, even in the previous year, we've uh, done a lot of hard work on the execution front, but, uh, you know, some of these project completions tend to be lumpy in nature. So, you know, in the coming year, we are anticipating completions of about, you know, 3,800 odd crores. So, you know, on a quarterly basis, you will see uh, significant completions taking place. Uh, and uh, the next year, I think uh, there's again going to be a 40 to 50 percent rise uh, in term, in value terms of the completions which are happening. So you know that will have uh, you know more revenue being recognized uh, on the P&L. So by and large, these are the key numbers. You know, happy to address any of uh, you know your questions with regard to our current of, current plans or future strategy, whatever. So over to you, Adil. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from Dharayana Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, am I am I audible, sir? Yes, Deepak. Please yep, yep, yep. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for this uh, opportunity. So, just first up on the last statement that you made. I think in the presentation I read somewhere we are looking for twelve thousand crores kind of a revenue recognition over FI twenty four to FI twenty six. So, uh, so ideally, if FI24 is about 1,200 crores, and this year we're targeting 3,800 crores, about 7,000 crores of revenue recognition we're targeting in FI26, would, uh, would that be a fair calculation? Yes. Okay, 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 understood. And um, and, and what sort of pre-sales we might be looking at FI26? I mean, if you have to do 7,000 crores of uh, revenue recognition, so what sort of pre-sales we are looking at? So see, two things are not are mutually exclusive, uh, Deepak. So pre-sales is a factor of, you know, what is the dry powder with us, what is unlaunched inventory. So, you know, we've not given a guidance, you know, for FI26 as yet, but, uh, you know, if we're achieving 10,000 crores in this year, you know, we'll definitely be giving a good growth target for the next year. But, you know, one thing at a time. Uh, uh, you know, as far as completions are concerned, yes, it faces the ongoing project. So your math on that is is by and large correct. Uh, uh, absolutely. Okay, uh, uh, I got it. And uh, and and you also mentioned on the uh, pro forma, right? Uh, that ideally uh, the pre-sales or uh, that we would be ideally doing in FI25 would have a embedded pat of about 25%, and FI24 I think was about 20-21%. Correct. Right. 
yeah so so ideally uh, i mean would that translate also to your reported revenue as well if if you i mean report 3800 crores this year or 7000 crores next year so how would the reported uh, 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 reported pat margin might look at in in light of uh, i mean uh, 16000 crores more launches you might be doing in fi 25 itself right and fi 26 might be higher uh, so so throw if you can throw some light on that would be very helpful so deepak see what that embedded a bit of a performer statement uh, you know portrays is that the lawn the sales which we've done in the current year which is roughly 7300 odd crores mm-hmm. on that we anticipate a profitability of 32% so now you know see we know our land cost we we have our estimate of the development uh, you know cost with certain contingencies you know on that sales where we get realizations of about you know 11800 odd rupees a foot we anticipate uh you know a profitability of about 32% at an ebitda level and likewise for the current year you know we have with us you know the launches which are happening the you know estimated price points we have so on that you know uh, since uh, we are also coming up with projects in sector 71 which is more prime uh, you know the profitability is going up and you know 35% is a number we are very comfortable for the sales which are yet to happen yeah uh, correct so so i was just trying to understand this performer translating into your uh, the reported pnl uh, so how different would that be performer versus your reported pnl so reported pnl is being uh, you know done basis projects which are getting completed correct. so if in this year we are talking about uh, you know completions which will reflect the sale or uh, revenue recognition of about 38 100 odd crores Mm-hmm. Uh, my guess is the uh, average per square foot realization on that scale would be anywhere between 6000 to 7000 odd rupees mm-hmm. uh, and our ebitda margin you know should be anywhere uh, you know uh, will be a little south of the 30% you know what exactly be 30 but it will be uh, a little lower you know than that number Uh, so so uh, so so that itself is a very good number if if on 3800 crores we can have a beta margin of 30% so that ideally means 18 20% kind of a pat margin so yeah about 27 28% of a beta margin and yes a, a high team sort of pat margin is something which you know we end high team so okay okay fair enough I, um i i i got it i think yeah, that that would be it from my side all the way best thank you so much thank you deepak thank you The next question is from the line of Mrutuja Iswal from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, Raja Pratapuri. Congratulations on your fantastic performance. Uh, two or three questions from my side. One is, if you could, uh, you know, uh, you've given a 12,000 crore odd of revenue, 120 billion, which is to be recognized over the three years. Uh, can you give us a sense on what is uh, the cost and uh, uh the cost total cost against it and the cost already incurred that's that's my first question uh mr sir we can answer it offline i think right now we don't uh, have that number on what is exact okay. uh, cost incurred and yet sure. incurred but by and large you know both put together uh, i think one can if we assume what we can bring it in a better margin on this so i think that will answer to your point from a recognition perspective okay uh point two similar on the margin thing uh you know if you look at slide 17 where you given the break up uh, of revenue recognition between mid income and affordable now there is a reasonable shift uh, uh in the composition towards mid income from affordable uh but the adjusted ebitda margin does not seem to reflect that fully you know you had a bit of a drop so any um, reason i mean we would have expected that a higher mid income recognition would lead to an expansion in margins so anything that could uh, help um, align that or reconcile that see mid income mutaza see what's getting recognized so if uh, you know since you have some bit of you know background on the company so mid income say sure. when we started these were uh, you know very entry level mid income you know flows which were doing in sona market Okay. We started okay. selling. These are about you know forty to forty three hundred rupees a foot. So it was 
somewhere you could call it either premium affordable stock, you know, uh, early level mid income project. So what is starting to get complete or what is coming to the PNL are these, you know, floors which we did in solar market. Uh, as you know, we did floors in the Gurgaon market. You know, we started at about you know about seven or thousand rupees a foot, and you know we sold them at about yeah. thousand yeah. as well. You know, the margins are expanding. Uh, you know, with the Gurgaon middle okay. of the portfolio. And just the last leg of questions uh, from my side. Uh, I think you've partly already addressed that. If I look at that cash flow statement, uh, 31 billion of uh, collections, getting you about 9 billion. Even this would reflect some amount of, you know, the cash flow statement would also be representative uh, more of lower margin projects. And we could see this margin profile, you know, the, you already highlighted that you're looking to go to more towards 45% next year. So would it be fair to say that the current cash flow also has a fair amount of those legacy projects, you know? Uh, see, I think two, three factors, I think it's, it's tough to generalize and, you know, uh, just uh, say that it's, so one factor is, of course, yes, I think uh, there's mix of projects, you know, there's still, you know, affordable housing projects uh, getting completed. So while, uh, you know, so the collections and the completion cost uh, does not have the kind of, uh, you know, difference which a premium project has. So I think that's definitely one of the factors. We also have mid-income projects in Corona, which we started with as part of it. The other key factor is that we've uh, spent, or we have increased our construction uh, spend in the previous year. However, some of those completions are happening in the current year. You know, so that's one, or I would say an equally uh, critical factor due to which, you know, the operating surplus was uh, around 30%. Uh, but in the coming year, you know, if we are assuming like a six or thousand crores, uh, you know, of collection, with a much higher, you know, sort of construction spend uh, for us to achieve that 3,800 crores completion plus, you know, construction spend on other projects, uh, you know, we are achieving much higher sort of, uh, you know, operating surplus. And that's why that 45% number is being expected for this year. Sure. Thanks so much, Rajay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, more uh, better performance. Uh, looking forward to continued improvement. Thank you. Thanks, Rajay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Sheet from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, first is on, you know, launches. You briefly mentioned in your commentary about uh, you know, the kind of launches that we are looking at uh, this year. Um, uh, you know, just if you can elaborate on the exact, uh, you know, size, uh, uh, you know, how much of that is sector 71, sonar road, etc. Uh, that would be helpful. Sure, British. So, uh, British, uh, we are coming up with two larger launches. Uh, the first one is in sector 71. Uh, you know, it's a group housing project. Uh, you know, we it's already a licensed project uh, with some 22 and a half on square or some 22 and a half acres. So in that project, uh, you know, our overall revenue uh, is expected to be in excess of 6,000 crores. Uh, likewise, in Sona, you know, it's a large project. You know, we may uh, may not fully launch it, but yes, I think bulk of it is getting launched, which should also. Have, which also has a revenue potential of more than 6,000 odd crores. Uh, then we are coming up with another group housing project uh, in sector 84, which is uh, actually on, literally on, you know, the Dark Expressway. So that will have a potential of, you know, a, a little short of, you know, 2,000 crores, but somewhere in, in that range. And, uh, you know, then we have a project in, a smaller project in 37D, uh, you know, and another uh, township project in Manasar. Both, again, put together have a potential of about 2,000 crores. So, you know, uh, all these four projects, we are uh, at a reasonable stage in approvals. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's why we put them in our, you know, guidance roadmap for this year. If you'll add all of this, it will actually cross 16,000 odd crores. Sure, uh, that's that's very helpful. And uh, you know, generally we have seen you know these mid-income or uh, products which are 
you know, very well priced, uh, have seen a very strong response, you know, almost sold out, like you saw in your recent project, 37D. Uh, you know, this 10,000 crore guidance is just, you know, your conservatism to start with, uh, and you feel confident about blocking much more than that, and, or how should, or do you expect, uh, you know, certain of these projects should can have a, a slower absorption as part of your strategy? So, Pritish, uh, ever since, you know, we've started working, you know, we've never seen a slow, slow absorption. You know, we're yeah. always conscious of, you know, the customer requirement, uh, you know, the price points which make the product, you know, value for money. Because eventually, the, these are homes being developed, people and, you know, societies and complexes, you know, should have that value element, you know, from a customer perspective, you know. So, you know, see, we are very confident on the product which we are coming up in all of these markets, you know. So, for instance, Sona is, uh, you know, these flows which we have done in very high volumes over the previous years. Uh, there is very little supply of such product in the market right now. So, you know, uh, this more than 6,000 odd flows which is coming from Sona is very uniquely positioned. Likewise, even in sector 71, you know, we've, we've done a fairly good product and, you know, we do intend to uh, come at a price, uh, you know, at which it remains affordable for that segment, you know. It, it's, of course, you know, a reasonable price point as in today's terms, but, you know, still it will be like value for money from a customer standpoint. So, see, we are focusing on the product and mindful of the pricing. Uh, yeah. I think, I hope what you're saying uh, holds out to be true and, you know, we end up looking conservative on our sales target, but, you know, let things happen and, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we speak again in maybe one or two quarters or three quarters in this regard. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, second on, uh, you know, margins. Uh, so when you say embedded EBITDA margins, uh, you know, uh, Oh, does it exclude, uh, I mean, include the interest costs related to the working capital, uh, you know, which you might need? Or, you know, we are at such stage where, you know, uh, projects are getting sold out, so there is no need of working capital, and hence, you know, everything in that 35% EBITDA margin is all, all in cost that is included. So, uh, because we can talk about this number in different ways. Yeah. If I have to very uh, simply put it, we are super comfortable about this, you know, embedded EBITDA margin being talked about. Sure. But, uh, because, you know, we've acquired land over the last few years or, you know, we've been working on it in a very significant, uh, in a very, you know, uh, diligent way. So, you know, we know our land cost, which is not very steep. It's, it's very competitive, uh, you know, given the current situation. So, uh, you know, construction can be, you know, estimated. There's a certain level of, you know, uh, escalation you can assume in construction. So, you know, this 35% is like a very, a safe figure, you know, uh, which is there. Uh, so, as far as interest is concerned, uh, see, our land is by and large paid for. If you look at the entire, this 32 million square foot portfolio, I can tell you that mm -hmm. is, uh, maybe less than 400 crores, which is still due on this entire land parcel. You know, uh, there's not even, I'm still kind of, you know, keeping some buffers while while talking of this number. So, uh, you know, I'll, there's not much land cost, which is yet to be paid. And once land is paid, it's by and large a negative working capital business. So sure. interest we consider below the line after this 35%. Uh, working capital, we don't end up spending interest cost. So, so yes, this factors in all sort of you know finance costs which we may uh, incur in times to come. Yeah. So eventually, uh, you know, once these projects come up for recognition in PNL, your adjusted EBITDA margin and EBITDA margin, uh, what what are getting actually reported, will coincide. Right. That's what I want to know. Or maybe if, I mean, if it's very detailed, we can take it offline. So the gap will, uh, we can definitely take it offline, but see, the gap will come down. See, in, in the past, okay. when uh, we were not listed, a lot of these, you know, the debt levels were similar. So, you know, the loading of interest on the project cost or effectively cost of goods sold was much higher. 
Today, yeah. for a much larger enterprise, the debt, uh, you know, the gross debt level has come down. So, uh, you know, the finance cost and the cost of debt is coming down. So, you know, that loading on cost of goods sold is much lower. So, gradually, yes, this EBITDA margin and adjusted EBITDA margins, uh, you know, will come into a narrower, uh, you know, difference, rate, narrower range with each other. Sure, got it. Uh, and one last, uh, how much do you expect your land spend to be, uh, you know, next year? Uh, you know, while you have given us operating surplus guidance, uh, you know, how much do you think uh, you'll spend it on land and how much would go for uh, debt reduction? So, see, on the land side, uh, see, we expect it to be about, uh, you know, 1200 to 1500 odd crores we may spend on land and the balance for, should be available you know for debt reduction stroke debt servicing so about you know actually the net debt levels could come down significantly from the current level uh, is what we are expecting by the end of the year perfect very interesting thank you uh, all the best you guys you're doing a good job thank you thank you British. thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of Vaibhav Sabo from Nippon AIS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, congrats to the promoters and judges uh, for a uh, um, very good quarter and a uh, very good year. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, a uh, couple of uh, questions. So the first question, I will break it in terms of the uh, sales and launches feather. So uh, you have guided that you know 16,000 shares uh, will be launched this year. Uh, and uh, uh, what I see is that the inventory level is currently at around 6,150 CR. So uh, that cumulatively is somewhere close to around 220 uh, billion. Uh, so uh, uh, is there an upside to the sales feather which is there? And uh, just as a second part of this question, that uh, in the presentation uh, you have provided uh, on slide number 11 that, uh, uh, you know, the whole 32 million square feet you aim to launch by FI26. And if I do, like, you know, just uh, selling price into a uh, saleable area, uh, that total comes out to around 430 billion of uh, GDP. So are we, so for FI26, are we looking that uh, 27,000? Uh, CR uh, launch uh, 27,000 CR worth of launches, and uh, do we have the teams in place for handling that scale? So that will be my first question. Yeah, sure, Weber. Uh, thanks for asking the question. So, uh, so uh, Weber, see, fundamentally, uh, we do consider land by and large as a raw material. Uh, you know, it, it's a raw material with, with comparatively long, longer gestation period, you know, so usually uh, our experience has been that whenever we've acquired any land, you know, we end up planning it, you know, as, as we acquire and, you know, it takes anywhere between 15 to 18 months to seek all approvals. Uh, approval process is much more, it's quite streamlined, you know, in, in Gurgaon, there are four or five key approvals, you know, we are quite used to obtaining them on a project by project basis. So it takes about, you know, 15 to 18 months to kind of, uh, you know, uh, launch any land parcel which gets acquired. So, you know, as a strategy, uh, the idea is to, uh, you know, have land bank which is good for, you know, let's say three or four years and not more, you know, in terms of launches. Uh, don't want to comment exactly on the quantum of launch which we'll do for the next year, but yes, I think, uh, you know, the math is not wrong. Over the next two to three years, whatever, two, two and a half years, three years, you know, we'll launch whatever we have. It's not that, you know, we intend to sit on any of these land banks with the assumption or for any speculative reasons that the pricing may go up. Uh, you know, it is like a home manufacturing company. The idea is to keep buying land and keep churning out the end product and sell it. So, so that's the thesis. Yes, I think the number of, uh, the quantum of launch for the coming year uh, is going to be much higher. And uh, we have the dry powder right in hand with us, and there are no significant land payments on this entire portfolio. Uh, understood. Uh, and uh, no, just wanted to check. Uh, so uh, you know, just uh, uh, reiterating. So for the sales team, like you know, have they planned for the magnitude of the sales that they're doing? So the has the sales team 
been encapsulated because uh, let's say you know that uh, 15,000 share launch or let's say for next year even conservatively 20,000 share of launch that would require I, I would assume I would be assume you know because we have done like 7,000 CR of sales uh, this year so uh, is there a team uh, which we have built out and how we are looking at that? So, uh, wherever we are uh, comfortable from a competence and capability perspective, whether it is uh, on the sales front or on the, you know, execution front. So, I think uh, the platform has, uh, you know, competencies to achieve a much higher scale uh, than at which we are operating. So, you know, uh, that, that we have those capabilities, what I would like to, you know, add it. And uh, and uh, just a uh, second question, uh, you know, so what was the uh, delivery of means uh, in terms of the, uh, sorry, uh, in terms of the 12 billion that we recognized this year, how much uh, have we delivered in terms of a million square feet and uh, number of units for the year? I'll, uh, if you just, uh, we'll share with that with you offline. And I don't have that number handy with me right now. Sure. And uh, just one last question from my side, for the sector 71, you know, where we have 70 million square feet of uh, total land and uh, we are launching, I th uh, I'm assuming around uh, one third, so around uh, five to six million square feet, uh, what's the uh, JDA share, what's the revenue share for the JDA partner approximately? So we are not launching one third, first of all, uh, we are we resumed a launch of about you know uh, 3.6 million square foot for the coming year to be precise okay. so a lot of it will still be available for launch in the coming years uh, i can reconfirm our numbers but out of the 17 million uh, i think about f uh, 13 to 14 million is fully owned by the company whereas about you know three three and a half million is uh, you know is going to come up three and a half million is going to come up uh, on a project where uh, there's a GDA partner, which is uh, about 13 and a half million, which is kind of owned by the company. Understood. And uh, what is the JDA share for? Uh, so, what is the attributable number in the JDA for of the 3.5 million square feet to the company? Um, three and a half million, uh, you could assume that about, you know, 1.2, 1.3 million, uh, you know, revenue equivalent will not come to us. While we link the cost, so it's a it's a, a simple revenue uh, share uh, JDA. Uh, I think about 32 to 34, 35 odd percent uh, is uh, you know is equivalent to the land owner. Understood. Uh, thanks a lot for, for the opportunity and all the best. Yeah, I was just uh, restating these numbers, reiterating. So 70 million uh, by large, 13 and a half is owned, three and a half is in JDA. Out of that three and a half, about 35 odd percent. A ballpark is the uh, JTA share of the Understood. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prem Kurana from Anand Shares and Stock Broker. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my questions and congratulations on good set of numbers in this quarter. So my first question was uh, related to the, the, the group that we envisage in our uh, Three shares. We, I mean, want to go from 73 odd billion rupees to almost 100 odd billion, which is good 38 percent sort of growth on a YOY basis. I mean, would it be possible for you to kind of deconstruct this growth in terms of, I mean, uh, how much do you expect the 38 percent to come from uh, improvement in same location sales velocity? How much would be the pricing action with the existing projects, and how much of this would potentially be dependent on? Uh, the new launches uh, that you manage and fair to assume given the fact that we, I mean, we are, uh, I mean, we generally get to see seriously good sales even at, I mean, at the launch itself. Uh, a large part of this 38 percent growth would be dependent on the new launches. So, uh, Prem, thanks for asking this question. So, uh, Prem, the way we look at it is that we, uh, you know, we are coming up with launches in our code markets. You know, so within Gurgaon, you know, there's certain micro markets uh, where we've literally done category creation. So if you look at the Sona, you know, market, uh, so Sona is just on the periphery of Gurgaon, and with this Sona elevated corridor and this Delhi Mumbai industrial corridor starting from Sona, you know, it's literally 
become a stone throw away distance from uh, you know the sona market sona road market of gurgaon so you know we've done the highest volumes in that market on a sustained basis over the last you know 5 to 6 years and literally uh, you know you know if i may boast a little to say that you know we've done bit of you know market creation or category creation you know in the sona market so uh, you know we are coming up with a very reasonable size project which has sale potential of upwards of 60 billion mm-hmm. uh, we are very bullish on the sale uh, i will prefer to refrain on whether you know on of the sale is happening at launch or you know it's happening in one or two quarters you know uh, you know that would be a lot of prediction or lot of you know uh, you know a lot of i would say guesstimate involved in that but yes you know we are very comfortable with that product and location is what i can say sure. uh, you know second is sector 71 so which is you know the group housing project uh, the the product is i would say a notch above uh, what we recently launched in sector 37d so between these two projects itself you know we are doing launches in excess of 12000 crores or almost 75% of the launch uh, you know pipeline which we talked about so see we are comfortable with both of these projects prem i think uh, we'll wait to see on the customer response you know who knows we can entirely get told on launch but you know uh, it's all a guesstimate you know uh, let's wait and watch you know in next you know couple of quarters uh, on how the market responds to it But sure. Confidence level is is high. Sure. And the other question was, uh, essentially, I mean, when I look at the NCR real estate market today, I mean, and and if I were to compare with the last cycle, and we're more than double of what we used to be, uh, which is how I mean, most of us have been able to grow there. But any sense, what will be our market share? And uh, I mean, would you would you have any number in mind by when? I mean, let's say if you were to achieve that number, which is when I mean, you would start looking out because. I mean, at this point in time, I don't see any issue in terms of uh, growth potential for us because there are multiple micro markets where we are not yet present in N- within NCR region. But what sort of number would uh, kind of make you kind of start looking out uh, for 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 new growth opportunities or new growth areas? And what will be our market share in terms of such a value sales in let's say NCR real estate market today? What could the total size of this real estate market be now so uh in uh i'll not have the exact numbers with me i i can give you guidance uh, broadly in terms of a few numbers so uh, see the migration trend you know from people moving from delhi to gurgaon is very strong okay because a uh, lot of you know great offices are in gurgaon you know and it supports a much better you know social infrastructure the connectivity between delhi and gurgaon has also gone up significantly so you know over the years that trend is only going upwards post pandemic again you know we've seen lot of that, that trend kind of you know uh, getting lot of traction so you know migration trend are very strong uh, supply is still not happening in very large numbers you know by and large gurgaon is give or take like you know 15 to 20 or 1000 homes have uh, you know come up in the previous year and you know we sold about you know 45 4600 dot homes so we have a fair share in the market uh, you know right now uh, and you know we have also tried to distinguish ourselves in the within that market you know so uh, mid income could be a slightly you know we playing in a slightly broad sort of spectrum you know starting at about 1 1 and a half crores and going up to about 5 or crores you know so that's the spectrum in which we are playing uh, so uh, you know there is little competition which we see from uh, you know large developers who have like good presence in this market and who can come up with a sustained supply there are few large developers who've got very little uh, you know land position uh, in this market and hence they'll not be able to Uh, come up with a sustained supply whereas you know since we belong to this market and uh, you know we have good portfolio uh, you know we have a good you could say a quarter uh, you know about anywhere close to 25 or percent you know market share is something which we are enjoying and we'll hold up uh, to that sort of share in this market sure and and any thoughts on when would you be required to go and start looking out outside ncr 
real estate market because as i see it uh, i mean if i were to look at the last uh, large three listed uh, real estate developers including you i mean the the, the aggregate sales between you three uh, seems that when we've done more than 30000 odd crore rupees between three of us uh, is it possible we able to see some more consolidation with the 30000 crore in itself between three is fairly fairly large number to have right is it is it possible to be able to have more 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 market share consolidation or uh, the the way to grow is to be able to kind of look for new 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 growth areas so the way we look at this same is that see we are uh, still supply constrained uh, we are not you know housing surplus as a country or as a you know any of the cities you know the demand the population uh you know growth of this region you know gurgaon within the entire large north indian sort of you know uh, area is, is so significant that you know we are usually supply constrained you know so we feel uh, see it's tough to say what is that real uh, you know market housing market uh, you know in gurgaon right now but it's significantly higher then the numbers we are talking about so i don't think we need to eat up into any market share i think this entire pie is going to increase significantly over the years to come sure sure uh, thank you that's in my end and all the very best for the future thank you sir thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll take this as a last question and i'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments i think thanks to all of you for you know uh, giving us this time out today uh, we've we've seen a uh, good last year and you know we've uh, tried to maintain that discipline in terms of you know the guidance which we give and you know what we try and actually achieve uh, as as uh, you know uh, as a company so we hope that statement holds good for the year to come but uh, given the current situation we stay very positive on the business and uh, you know we would like to uh, keep coming up or keep beating our own targets in times to come and you know hope to stay associated with all of you in times to come thanks a lot for your time today thank you thank you on behalf of icsi securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you